PSOFT is NASA's high energy astrophysics software package. It's used for data reduction and data analysis of some of the data gathered with some of their high energy astrophysics missions. Today, I'm going to show you how to build ESOFT version 6.28. Howdy folks, my name is Nick, and as I already said, I'm going to show you how to build and install ESOFT version 6.28. I'll be using an Ubuntu machine. I recently just built a new machine, and I need to install Heesoft on it to do some of my research work. And so I figured, why not make an updated video to the one I already did, where uh, which was one of the first videos I ended up doing on this channel, uh, where I installed Heesoft version 6.26.1, I believe. But anyways, if you have any questions throughout this process, feel free to ask in the comment section down below. And I, obviously, I won't be able to answer specific questions to problems that come up with your computer specifically, but I will be able to answer general ones. So let's get started. There's going to be six steps we're going to follow to build and install Heesoft. First, we're going to download the Heesoft source code and the mission libraries. Second, we're going to install all required prerequisite packages. This is going to depend on the operating system you're working on. Third, we're going to configure our machine then we're going to build Heesoft. This is the longest uh, step of this process. Then fifth, we're going to install Heesoft. And sixth, we're going to set up the machine for easy access to Heesoft by just typing in one command. All right, so for the first step, you're going to want to go to hesarc.gsfc.nasa.gov uh, to the Heesoft Downloads page. You can find it linked in the description down below. And um, once you get here, there's going to be two steps. There's going to be the source code distribution, which NASA recommends, and there's the pre-compiled binary distribution. We are not going to be using the pre-compiled binary distribution in the two dozen or so times that I have installed Heesoft. I have only seen a pre-compiled binary distribution install correctly one time. So we're going to select the source code. And then you're going to select whichever operating system you're running on. I'm running on Ubuntu 2004, so I'm just going to select PC Linux Ubuntu. Then we're going to move on down here. And uh, it's going to ask you to download the desired packages. I'm going to strongly suggest that you select all of them just because in my experience you never know when you're going to work with another mission's data and it's easy for you to have that software already built and installed rather than not have it built and installed and have to completely uh, you know re-go through the build and installation process of Heesoft. So I would just recommend you select all of it and then you're going to hit submit and it will begin a download for you. Now it is going to download in a it is going to download in a tar gz uh, archive and that is going to be about 2.7 gigabytes and then once you unpack it it is going to be about 4.6 gigabytes. I already have it installed so we're not going to re-download it here but uh, if you do have slow bandwidth do uh, be patient and give it some time to download. Now we are going to install the prerequisite packages and this is going to depend on the, the operating system that you are using. I'm using Ubuntu and so very conveniently there is this installing Heesoft for Ubuntu page. I will link in the description down below from NASA. But you probably will not see these prerequisite packages unless you end up looking for your specific operating system but there are a number of these packages that are required first you're going to need lib read line dev you're also going to need lib curl l4 lib curl l4 gnu utils dev and then you're going to need lib curses 5 dev xorg dev gcc g++ g fortran Perl modules and Python 3 dev or Python dev. To install these, you can simply just copy and paste these from uh, this web page into the terminal window, or you could do what I did here and just type them in. 
What I would actually recommend doing is taking care of these prerequisite packages while Hesoft is downloading because you could probably get all of these prerequisite packages installed and ready to go while uh, Hesoft is downloading. I would like to briefly add here that getting these prerequisite packages installed properly is very important. This is where I see a majority of individuals actually have problems when installing Hesoft. They'll go to configure their build or actually build Hesoft and then something will go wrong because they either don't have the appropriate prerequisite package installed or for whatever reason, they're using a guide for a different operating system. So just make sure that you have all the necessary prerequisites installed. Now, once you get Hesoft fully downloaded, you're going to want to unpack it. And then wherever you have it unpacked, you're going to want to navigate into that Hesoft directory and then into this build dir directory in all caps. And then you're going to just open it up into a terminal window. And this is where we're going to do the configuration, uh, the build, and uh, more or less the installation, uh, mainly the uh, configuration and the build. So you're going to want this terminal window to do all of that in. So the next step is configuring our machine for Hesoft, and we're going to do that by typing in the following command and hitting enter. If you type in exactly what I typed in, you will not get command of the terminal window back. If you're following along with the Hesoft installation guide, then uh, that I will also link in the description, then you will get command of the terminal window back. And if you get command of the terminal window back, note that configuring the machine may take a handful of minutes. So it's important that you just be patient and wait a couple of minutes, at least for me on this machine, configuring Hesoft 6.28 took a, anywhere between five and 10 minutes. Uh, it was fairly quick compared to some of the other processes we're going to do later on. But this is a very important step because if Hesoft or, or your machine is not configured properly for Hesoft, it will not run properly. Now, if you type in the exact command I did to configure your machine for Hesoft, you should get command of the terminal window back once the configuration process is done. If you copied exactly what Hesoft did from the installation guide, you will just have to wait. But a surefire way to make sure that everything was configured correctly is to open up the configure.txt file and just scroll through. It's not a terribly long file and make sure there isn't any failures or errors. And actually, if you scroll all the way to the bottom, you should see the file following here. And it's very important that you check this configuration.txt uh, file here just to make sure that everything configured correctly because again, it, it's very easy for something to go wrong in these early stages and then uh, Hesoft will not build correctly or install correctly. Okay, so now staying in the same build dir directory, we're actually going to build Hesoft by typing in the following command, make build.log, and uh, we're not going to put an ampersand at the end of this command line, uh, or command, because that ampersand at the very end that you may see in the Hesoft uh guide written up by NASA gives you command of the terminal window back and this is a very long process and if you mess with Hesoft in any way while it's still building it will not build correctly. You can open up this directory in uh, another terminal window and type in the command tail uh, dash f build.log to see the build actually happening in real time which is really nice. Uh, because that is also a really nice way for you to tell when the Hesoft build is complete. And again, this will take a very long time. It will take an excess of an hour I've seen in uh, most cases. So just be patient and maybe go do something else while this happens because it is a very, very long process. Now, once Hesoft is finished done building, if you typed in the tail F command, the build log uh, that is displayed in the terminal window should say finished make all at the very end. I would recommend that you at least spot check the build log for any failures or errors or issues or anything of that sort of nature. However, that build log is going to be very, very long and uh, 
I don't particularly recommend you waste your time going through the entire build log meticulously to make sure everything worked correctly. Chances are, if you just spot check it and a majority of uh, things are built correctly, then this will be built uh, correctly at all, and you should see this finished make all at the very end, and everything should be fine and ready to go. I should also mention that this didn't particularly take uh, an hour. It took about 45 minutes on this machine. However, this is a beefy machine. It's 12 core, 24 thread machine. And so uh, I don't know if that has anything to do with the build speeds. I imagine it does. So again, a good rule of thumb is that this will probably take about an hour for you. Okay, now staying in the build dir directory, once we're done and the build is complete, we need to actually install Heasoft, and you can do that by typing in the command you're seeing on the screen right now, and then just hitting enter again, and just like usual, if you typed in the extra ampersand at the end that is displayed in the NASA guide, you will get command of the terminal window back, but... Uh, for me here, uh, you can see uh, I just hit enter, we don't have command of the terminal window back, and we'll get command of the terminal window again once the installation process is completed. So once the installation process is complete, and you'll know that because it'll give you back command of the terminal window again, you will be done dealing with or working with the build dir directory, and you can navigate your way out of that. And you'll notice this x86 directory in the Heasoft directory that was not there before. And that is Heasoft. That is what we're interested in. So now we'll open up a fresh terminal window and we'll type in the following command. Export head s equals and then we'll type in the path to that x86 folder I was just talking about. It will be within the Heasoft directory. And then we're going to type in a dot. Uh, and then the dollar sign uh, head s head s in it dot sh is going to run this shell script and then we're going to set that up as an alias that alias that we're going to use is going to be called he in it you could call it he soft if you'd like uh, but uh, I'm going to call it he in it because that's what I've always called it uh, and then he in it equals and then the same command that we typed in the line before now if we hit enter on this alias and then type in he in it, he soft should be initialized and we can type in a software package from he soft to test if he soft is working. So let's type in FV for the fits viewer and you can see it pulls right up. Fits viewer is working so he soft in some regard is working. Let's try XPEC, another popular piece of software and we'll hit enter and uh, I didn't type it in correctly and expect pops right up after I type it in correctly and it's all working good so now what we're going to do is we're going to set up Heasoft uh, in the bash RC so that we can easily just type in the command he in it at any point uh, and be able to run Heasoft from any terminal window at any point we'd like so we're going to type in the command sudo uh, get it G-E-D-I-T, or whatever text editor you use, and then dot bash RC. Also, the idea for this comes from a Medium article, which I will link down below. It's also an installation guide on Medium for a much older version of Heasoft, but this is a, a really brilliant way to set things up. But what you're going to do is uh, you're going to just navigate your way down to the bottom of your bash RC file, and uh, we're going to Put in two new lines here and we're just going to comment in and just label the next couple of lines as Heasoft so we know where it sits in the bash RC and then we'll just copy and paste those three commands that we typed into the terminal window before. We should be able to see that uh, there's this error message, but disregard that because I always get that error message and it never seems to be a problem. Um, and then we'll just open up a fresh terminal window and we'll type in he init to initialize he soft. We'll do the same test as before, FV, 
and Fitz Viewer opens right back up, which is great. And then how about X Spec? And that opens up, which is great. And so that is it. You have HeSoft working and ready to go. As I said already throughout the video, a bunch of these links will be linked in the uh, description down below. If you have any questions at all, feel free to ask in the comment section down below and I'll do my best to help you out as best as I can. Again, some of these problems are going to be down to just what kind of a build you're dealing with and how you have your machine configured uh, and I really don't have any control of that. The best thing I can do is to really just direct you in some of the problems I've dealt with in my experience. Uh, but hopefully this was able to help you out. If it did, uh, make sure to let me know in the comments or by leaving a like. And thank you very much for watching. I do appreciate it, and I hope to see you again next time.